spark to the show, everybody. Uh, I want to also say, uh, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. All right, spark. Let's get right down to it. So let me know, man. Tell the people what influenced you from the very beginning to make you want to become a gang member. Yeah, man. First of all, man. Thank you for having me. Off the A little crazy, though. You know, I got the utmost respect for you. We always had a rapport with one another. We was always able to sit down, man, open up our minds to uh, the possibility of our potentials. And uh, I'm glad you have me to uh, sit down and speak on it, per yeah. se. Um, yeah, um, so I grew up um, in, a, in an era where, you know, the, the Black Panthers was running around. Um, it, it was a revolutionary spirit at the time. I was knee high to a stump, looking at all this happening, you know, in and around my uh, my community. Uh, going forward from that, you know, uh, I ended up basically on the west side. And in 1970, thereabouts, uh, this new gang per se, organization, however you want to put it, uh, started popping up, you know, at the schools and the parks and stuff, and uh, the way their swag, you know, for it just caught my attention, it caught my eye, the earrings, the uniforms, which was biscuits, leather coats, ace deuces, um, and they seemed to be fearless, uh, and it kind of, you know, touched my little spirit, and uh, I decided I wanted to be, you know, up close and next to these, uh, to these black men that were uh, seemingly fearless. So um, that's how I became associated with the West Side Crips as a baby West Side Crip, uh, and that's the reason why. I mean, it goes deeper. We're not going to get into the pathologies and psychologies of, of, you know, my household, my. Uh, you know, what led me uh, to be in the streets instead of in the classroom, per se. But by and large, uh, you know, I was seduced by the imagery and the, uh, and the, the basic, the, the downness of what I thought I saw. And what I, no, I didn't even thought I saw, what I saw. And that's the reason I chose on my, you know, volition to become a baby West Side Crip. Yeah, I think that's what it, what it all, what it's all, man. We all, like, I know for me coming up, just seeing the older homies and stuff that they was doing, it's like, that's what influenced me. It's like it's a trip, because once uh, when I was younger, man, I stayed on Berendo. Right. I went to West Staff, that's probably like the first grade or something. So where I stayed at on Berendo before you go down to Bobby Hill, Lavelle told me, I think Bruiser used to be over there. I think I had a homegirl named Jackie back in the day used to be in there. So I used to see the Crips back in the days myself. And I said, look, and they had low riders and all that, and like reading walls and all that. So I, I, I always, it's the same way, I always just witnessed, that's what influenced me, just watching the G homies, what they did. And I know people always wonder, what is like, what started Sparks? You know what I mean? What started Lavelle? What started Tretch and Evil and everybody else to be gang members? Because you come up in the time up under Tookie now. I come up under the time why y'all, why you was imprisoned in the second generation, because I'm the third generation right now. So I, when I come up, I'm just witnessing this, but I know nobody never asked you this. What made you want to become a gang member at the time you did back in the 70s? Because, I mean, y'all pioneers, bro. You know what I mean? It's just to say, this is the founder, one of the co-founders, the original members of the Raymond Avenue Crips. So that's why it's an honor for me to have him on my show, to put him on here, because this is just great casting right here. Also, man, it's like, 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 okay, like your first time in juvenile hall, what was that like? Actually, uh, it was like a badge of honor to go to juvenile hall. And to, I mean, as, you know, uh, backwards as that is. Uh, and it shows a lack of, uh, uh, now that I know better, a lack of self-esteem. But at that moment, at that time in my life, I was uh, very willing to be locked up, incarcerated, and go to where I thought uh, the battlegrounds were for this gang thing. Uh, and uh, uh, I didn't plan or set out to go uh, get, you know, locked up or caught at what I was doing because I believe, you know, your value is measured by, right. you know, how slick you are 
and getting away from that type of circumstance. But when I first went there, uh, I was processing the Central Juvenile Hall uh, maybe at the age of 13 or 12. And I was already a Baby West Side Crip member. And I remember going into the reception area, being processed in and seeing a, a, a brim up in there. And uh, he was maybe my age, a year older. Mm. And first thing I did was try and make my name known with him. And yeah. told him straight up, this is after the art. I, you, at that point, uh, I mean, it wasn't really no tattoos or nothing like that saying you was cripping. Uh, but we had pierced ears in our left ear. And we were one of the only gangs of black units in LA, probably in the nation that did that at this time. Mm -hmm. Right now, people look around and see all these, you know, uh, pierced ears and stuff, but they don't know the history of it. Uh, and we pierced our ear, left ear. Uh, so when I went into juvenile hall, I had my left ear pierced when I think I was 12. Um, that was basically to every other gang out there, you was a criminal. So what the bloods went to the right? The bloods was not piercing their ear at this time, mm. you know. But yeah, later on, a little bit later, probably 74, 75, uh, I remember seeing uh, a couple of brims with a right ear pierced. Mm. And so uh, I don't think it took hold like the Crips did, yeah. uh, but. Uh, I went in there and this guy was a little brim and he like you a crip and that was my first <laughs> yeah that was my that was my first juvenile squat you know <laughs> and, um <laughs> and you know that's just how we got out you know uh we we, we got out from the standpoint of you know uh the enemy is in front of you you're supposed to do what you're supposed it's to crazy. Yeah. There ain't no, no questions asked Went into juvenile hall, uh, you know, I, I, I was raised, you know, at the time I didn't know how poor I was in my household. And I know this is a sorry thing to say, but when I went into juvenile hall, <laughs> they was feeding me better than I was <laughs> fed at the house. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I just, I just, seen um you know a lot of my older homeboys that you know original uh crips that was up in there uh, with me you know they of course embraced me like you know i was their own yeah. and uh we just went about what we did up in there like soldiers do right right did you ever uh okay you say back then the the, the big homies the big homies for you was tookie him and raymond washington and them cats right Exactly. So, so I'm, I know you met Tookie. I never really heard you mention too much about uh, Raymond Washington. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, Especially now, being that they making this, they working on this project right now, this story. You know right. what I mean? The Raymond Washington story. I actually think, man, I don't know. They they bringing people involved with this. I, mean, I was watching something on uh, YouTube the other day, and they was talking about it. That's the kind of stuff, you know. I'm surprised, you know. Just I, I feel like, in a sense, man, that people ain't acknowledge you. you. I feel like you should be included in certain stuff because. I mean, Raymond's period, man. I think the Raymond Avenue Crips is a staple in this cripping from the start, from the beginning. I mean, once everything broke off into the different fractions, right? And I feel like the Raymonds don't get recognized as enough for the stuff that y'all did in the beginning. You know what I mean, people acknowledge a lot of more people, but I think they should acknowledge more, like cats like yourself, Tretch and Evil, Lavelle, you know what I mean, should be mentioned because y'all was branches off of that, the baby West Side Crips you came from that structure in the beginning. Yeah, um, you know, me and you, we, we, I mean, the homies, you know, uh, you know, the current generation, generation after us, but us, the original ranks, yeah. uh, we were only concerned about recognition by our peers, by our homies. You know, we wasn't too much concerned about uh, what the outer world thought about us or Man. how they responded to us. Um, but inside Crippin, you know, of course, uh, we was well respected and renowned. So that was the only thing. In fact, we didn't even want that attention to the original. I know your generation is next in the, you got the information age and you got 
all this profiteering and the people that commercialize the art form of crypto. Um, so, but yeah, well, I knew uh, I knew Raymond. Uh, I met. I well, I, let me say this first of all. Know him, know him. Did I run with him? No. Yeah, you know. I had four experiences with Raymond Washington first being at the Rosecrans skating ring. Um, probably 1978. Yes, it was. 1978, uh, me and Skeet, he went up to the Elder Crips. On Sundays, it, it was the place to be. And, you know, I already, uh, everybody was there, Jamel took you. Uh, at this point, uh, Odie, rest in peace, Buddha, rest in peace. But, uh, yeah, that's the first place I, I met Raymond. Uh, I introduced myself to him uh, because I felt like that's what you need to do when you right. run up on, you know, your OGs, yeah. you, you, you out there. The, you know, uh, working in their namesake, you need to make yourself known to them. Right. And I did. He respected that. Uh, we left there, did what we did. Second time I met Raymond was at a crib meeting in Sentinella Park. And we were in there discussing the death of a real known crib by the name of Ricky Silas from the east side. And uh, Raymond's came up in there, made themselves known. Uh, demonstrated some things for Raymond and the overall Crip machine uh, that was highly respected by everybody there, and we did. Okay, and then uh, I met Raymond at another Crip meeting at Real Rogers Park um, the same year, not too long after that. And unfortunately, that Crip meeting was uh, basically inundated with Shares, LAPD, helicopters. Oh, they got footage uh, for sure of that crib meeting. That was uh, overall. So whenever Raymond gave crib meeting, uh, basically, you know, Compton, uh, West Side, East Side, everybody participated, everybody came. And when we lost Raymond, we lost that, which was very important. But yeah, then the last time I seen Raymond was uh, at a party on town and uh, on town avenue on the east side okay. and pulled up on him and we had a few discussions